a uh, almost a renaissance in in a, a yield generation from uh, what we've been built on this chain because of the cheap fees and, and things like that. Dude, it's 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 a power to the people sort of scenario, right? Like you have to like fundamentally like a protocol like liquid loans changed the game, you know. And here's what we what I know for a fact is that once that market share is is discovered to the greater uh you know protocol community uh, they're going to want a piece of that you know it, it's just how it works every time like we make anything successful on pulse chain we essentially are voting for more of it right and that means that we're going to get more players coming in we're going to have uh, more options in the future you know and the the best way to succeed is to be in sync with what's actually uh, going on. So you could either obviously like mitigate, you could offset risk. And you're right. And that's what I would love to prevent a little bit more is that the people who, there's a sharp learning curve. There's a very sharp learning curve. And if you've been in it from the beginning or you sack for Pulse Chain, like you, you you might take for granted like how well informed you actually are like imagine anybody coming into this scenario like today like the first first their first day you know like their little like little toddler right on the chain like it's not easy and even if you have large bags and if if i just think it sends a, a message that uh what Gary was actually saying, it's very relevant, I think, is that uh, sort of epso facto, it, that's what develops the identity for the chain. It's not what we say, it's really what we do, right? And so whatever makes doing like easier or like more informed, that's what will actually get large amounts of capital to commit to treating Pulse Chain as a top tier asset. That's what will happen. When you see $5 million flow into the bridge, like, like uh, you know, very sort of predictably so, uh, that's when other people say, okay, now my money is safe here because someone else is willing to go throw $5 million or $10 million at it. And the way it sort of spirals is that five turned into 50 and that made a huge change. Look at the chart, right? And so it's it, like whatever we say, like you can hype up, like I, I have no problem with meme coins. I have no problem with that, none of this stuff. You know, um, I, it certainly all has a place, but like money talks. <laughs> At the end of the day, people see millions of dollars falling into that bridge. They want a piece of it. And that's where you stand. That's where really the ecosystem at large benefits. That's what allows people to have enough funding. Like what happened with Aid for Way is now they've done sufficiently well enough that they can attract talented developers, more talent, even more talented artists. Like there's already some great creators in that, in that, in that group, you know. Uh, and then, you know, they can innovate, right? And when you, when you put those things together, you know, you get uh, uh, not just like, not just ideas, but you actually get the opportunity to implement them and you, you have enough of a voice, enough of a reach that, you know, people actually know about what you're doing. Uh, it completely changes the dynamics. I've always said this, like we haven't seen the most talented people answer blockchain yet. Like we haven't seen it. And a lot of them have in, in, in fact gone to not developing on Ethereum because of the expenses. Everyone wants to be on mainnet, don't get me wrong. But if you have to make a business decision of where you deploy to, most of the time when, when you crunch numbers, you're better off deploying to an L2 because you have such such lower fees, you have value proposition there and it's just it's just better for your business model like whatever the protocol is actually doing so now you you take that and you turn that upside down because here you go here's mainnet actual mainnet right not an l2 this is mainnet and it costs like a l2 so you know like it it, it takes away that sort of um uh it, it's really like a, a no a no-brainer right at that point you know, so that's really the value proposition here. And I think that uh, developers are going to take notice of that. You know, it, it's like already with like you, like you talk about Arbitrum or something. Well, you know, Solidity has like a particular version. Like if you guys look there at the top of every contract, it'll say Pragma and it'll give you some version of Solidity. Well, did you know that when you deploy to like an L2, you, they might not be caught up to like the latest versions of Solidity. Like you might have to wait a little bit longer to get that, you know, to, to, to use that version of Solidity. 
you know, there's other little like hiccups along the way that like certain op codes don't work the same way and with, uh, uh, or they're not available through like an Arbitrum as they are on uh, mainnet. And so you take all that away and you go, no, here's mainnet, but it's cheap for you to actually do stuff. So yeah, man, like we're going to see more and more talented people. And the more we succeed, like the more, uh, uh, pe- more like bandwidth people will have and more ability they will to actually innovate on the chain. Uh, I would love to see a scenario where we don't actually need any more sacks. Like, I, I, you know, it, it's great for the people like that, that ran them and, you know, kudos and all of that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, like if you have a great idea, like you shouldn't need a sack. You shouldn't need it. Like the market will decide, you know. And in fact, most projects are genuinely hurt by having a sack uh, up front. So I hope that that's where we get to eventually, you know, it's that like th- there's enough of like a consensus as to what's going on here. Uh, and there's enough of like um, like a predictable base that people feel their capital is actually safe. And, you know, Rakan will be selling for years. Like that's not going to go away. Like he can do this shit for another like two, three years, maybe four years. Like, but look, at the end of the day, uh, that price really only stayed down a short period of time, you know, and uh it's already higher than where he sold it's already higher than where he sold like you got to remember selling like a million dollars worth you catch a crazy like the price impact on that is 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 wicked like i think he got one four hundred thousand dollar sell order above like uh three zero one three and uh the rest of it was three zero one one right we're at sit we're sitting at three zero one two you know and peaked up around three zero one three right so basically like it, I, it's kind of amazing how well uh the you know the buyers actually came in um at this level so you know i think uh maybe i'm rambling at this point so so now let's go gary are you back yeah uh, sorry i was away for a bit can you hear me now no worries yeah yeah you're good yeah some great commentary you know i raised my hand earlier it was because uh, someone had said something positive uh, which is definitely um uh, nece- you warranted uh, about your hosting. Uh, I said that when I came into the space. I think that you bring uh, a reasoned um, kind of explainer to your uh, value um, descriptions about why the chain or why a particular product, uh, you know, should survive. So again, thanks for that. I think DX was the one who's complimenting you. I want to second that. Um, the other thing that's kind of a more recent topic is the. Uh, Kind of goes to the Lindy effect uh, that gets commented on. I think the, it wasn't the first time I heard it, but I've heard it so many times from Richard's content about like, why is it that a startup takes about two years before it really starts to get traction uh, and VCs really start to look at their, you know, ROI, uh, see Angel, uh, you know, fa- friends and family, like, you know, two years. Uh, same thing with a lot of the different products that have launched in the crypto space is typically it's around a two year mark before it really starts to hit its critical mass and uh, uh, perform high, high perform. Right. There, there's 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 the survival uh, effect. Right. It, it has survived. Its code has survived. Its founder has survived. Its you know core crew uh, has you know thrived or grown or been replaced. Uh, by new, stronger soldiers, I guess, uh, advocating uh, whatever the service or product is. So, like, there's a two-year kind of uh, phase. And um, I think that, you know, again, we're we're about eight or maybe ten months now, however many months it is. Uh, as far as Pulse Chain, of course, it's been seeded in our mind for close to three years. But, uh, you know, it's actual performance. You know, the longer that, it, you know, validators are validating and, you know, critical especially critically um, uh, vulnerable code and RPCs and things like that are basically figured out. And, you know, all these other things that have been going on as far as its uh, infrastructure support, uh, the longer it survives, then the more confidence that people have. That's true. We saw that initially the bridge uh, for Pulse Chain had 600 million or something like that over the course of the first month, month of launch and like uh, movement from Ethereum and, and new participants and, and maybe uh, money that had been saved up for a couple of years by people eager to participate in the chain. Uh, you know, we saw that that come across, and then we saw uh, that basically uh, uh, leave right and, and exit. Um, the the action and the timing of the action. I mean, I think my opinion has meant a lot when the account that controls the die, uh, African priest Greg the Duck whoever it is, whatever entity it is, uh, 
decided to not touch any of the sacrifice uh, monies, you know, although they've been converted to die almost instantly from the sacrifice, they sat there for all that time. And that's amazing. And that's awesome. That's part of the Lindy effect of like trust uh, developed over those couple of years. But really when that arbitrage that netted uh, around $8 million, when some of that arbitrage money moved across the bridge, you saw the bridge and the bridge was around 66 million on chain uh, that became over the course of a few weeks around 110, 120, 130 million, wherever it sits at now, you can see it. And you can see that, you know, the effect of 3.8 million on confidence for participants some of those participants may have been fund raised uh, protocols uh, out, you know, even from this chain, right? Because uh, um, uh, you know, because fifty million on one chain. So, so when the chain basically saw an action from Greg the Duck, then there was confidence to put money back into the chain, and uh, I saw that. Like I, I live action saw that. So I think it's the same thing, like the Lindy effect of the protocol surviving, the capital flow of coming across from Ethereum, the statements that even Trillian had said about like, uh, or others have made comments about what uh, what Vitalik has commented on as far as who are players in this upcoming cycle. You know, Richard Hart being one of those players and, and others that were popular, you know, two, three years ago, no longer being active uh, in there, you know, like, uh, are you a player in crypto? Like there's a there's a lot to be said over what's going to happen over the 2024 and 2025, in my opinion. Damn, we're we're gonna have to start calling you accounting gym instead of funding gym, Gary. That no, that was a very <laughs> good perspective. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'll follow up more after Benjamin. Go ahead. I, I see a hand up. Hey everybody, how you doing, Trillian? This is an excellent space. There's a lot of um, high level uh, information being discussed, and literally, you could probably we could put you and other people could have a do a let's say a master class on just each little point right so it's very interesting and um you know earlier uh one of the topics that we were talking about is market psychology right and you know for the average person and the most the experts and everybody i think the market psychology is the one thing that we can control personally Right, all these external things and all these you know complicated matters, um, those are super important. Like each element of them, but I believe the most important thing is market psychology. One, one, one on each person's right. So, and it's the one thing that, no matter how long you're in this game, is the trickiest part. And it's to me, I believe the most important part. So. I think that that's one thing that we could maybe possibly circle back to, right? Because that's how I think that's the one element that people do have control over. So let me just, let me think, let me give my two cents on that. Um, hmm. There's so much to talk about, but you know, it doesn't matter if you get the money early, right? A lot of people get lucky. And it doesn't. And on the other side, it sometimes it takes people a long time to get the money. But either way, there is a price, a price to be paid, right? This game, there in this investing thing we're doing, you are going to pay the dues no matter what. If you get it early, right, you get kind of lucky, right? There's a million things that can happen, right? You, you're going to think you're good. You're going to spend some money, this and that. You know, your wife's going to take some of the money. Before you know it, you're back to uh, zero and you have lots of problems. And uh, trust me, I know that in many different ways. I've got a, a personal close associate of mine who's made lots and lots of money for him and his um, people. And there's so much to discuss about that. So I'd like to hear... Um, I'd like to hear somebody else's opinion on that because like i said that's something that we can control right euphoria this that like that is the game to be truly mastered and no one will ever be able to master it because the dynamics change like when you make one move in crypto see we talked about earlier having a plan right everybody has a plan till they get punched in the face right and how it generally works is People come into this space thinking, I'm not going to be a trader, right? I'm going to hold like, uh, like you know, the, the greats say, right? If you do nothing, right? But along the way, if you make a trade, one trade 
trickles a whole series of psychological events that triggers other things in other directions in spirals, right? And before you know it, things have gone south, right? And why is that? How, how come one move leads to other moves? That's normal mark. That's for that's the, how the market works, right? There's things that come up in life where you just things that you can't anticipate, like the emotions of like, man, I've been sitting here for a year and a half. And we're not doing it. I mean, everybody's got their story, and, and the way that it generally, actually, the way that it works, like I could sit here and tell you uh, my specific things, but it won't apply to you. Each person has their own unique set of circumstances that will develop in their life and their uh, investment career that you'll never see coming, generally speaking, certain events. So you basically go in, you make your mistakes, and then when you do make a mistake, you go back and find out where you went wrong, and then you don't do it again. If, if, you're, if your experience in the market is your own, so if you've had mm -hmm. a, a, an attempt at a protocol or a project or trading a, a certain token, uh -huh. and you keep on, you, you, you once, twice, three times, you, you, you make a mistake, you lose money, okay, obviously the goal is to make money, uh, you go back, it's a self-reflection thing. And then basically you go, how did I, how, how can I avoid that in future? And then you apply a rule. But it's not that easy, a... Silver. Well, it's not that easy. Like you can't, the rules are constantly, okay. Yeah, well, but, I'm just, hang on. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, 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 all, all I'm saying is, is if you made a mistake, don't just keep on repeating it. Uh, and that's how you create your strategy and your rules. That That is something that that is uh, personal accountability. Um, so there's nothing, no, no one person to follow or one one thing to do it's you got to self-reflect and then just mm -hmm. try not to repeat the same thing yeah that's that's all i'm saying yeah and i would agree with that but understand this is time in the game like you can't fake that right so if people just stay in the game long enough right and don't get taken out because this game there's a million ways to get taken out in a trade or leveraging or this and that but if you stay in the game long enough okay you will be successful and if you develop rules like silver said and you and you take profit right yeah we could sit here and talk about profit right oh i've got a plan i'm gonna take this profit i'm gonna take that profit oh just wait till euphoria right wait till you think the money's easy right so i just want to wish everybody the best of luck on their journey and um it, it's wonderful to have it really is there is infighting and all this stuff in this community but at the heart of it all these people i believe are good people right and this is the strongest community and that all the problems that are hap that happen along the way in fighting this or that that will make people stronger and you're going to need all the strength that you can get to survive in this game and for your dreams to come true and not get taken out and anybody that tells you different is a bull and they haven't been in this game long enough or they're going to see the opposite of that side of that coin in just a matter of time listen here here's what i'll say like uh maybe maybe i'll be a bullish i don't know man but here here's here's the bottom line of it like if you don't have rules your probability of of doing any having any kind of meaningful success goes down to zero pretty quickly that's see it, it's not the fact that the rules have to work it's the fact that if you have no rules and by rules we're really talking about discipline and like uh you know some goal some objective that you're trying to reach uh if you don't have those your chances of of success dwindle to nearly nothing these are all the people who got ridiculously wealthy and lost everything those are the people who didn't have any rules uh, th there are also people who didn't have any rules who got, you know, crazy successful, but the number of, of them is very low. And what you always want to do just in general in life, you want to you want to use probability to your advantage as as much as possible. Of course, things happen you can't predict. And this is why they always say, like, you know, every model works until it, it doesn't. You know, it's like it's like one of those things where you're right. Like we're dealing with something so complicated and so multivariate that there is no solution. If there was a solution, it would just nobody would play the game. Right. It's the fact that there's this unpredictable sort of nature to it that intrigues people. Like this is this is why people are willing to you know take risks because the outs the return is so outsized from their risk that it's worth uh, it's worth trying, right? And 
and all the other stuff. Here's here's where where it, where it boils down to. Um, you and you mentioned this like as far as experience and 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 time in the market and and all that kind of uh, you know that, that that line of thinking. Here's what you have to sort of accept about yourself is that you, the way your brain works, it's wired a certain way, and you are sort of embedded without you know by default with a certain set of heuristics. And I really recommend people read uh, Daniel Kahneman's books, like um, Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow. Like that's a really good one if you're just going to read one, right? Uh, and he explains this from like, you know, he's a researcher, a professor, he wrote a bunch of books, like he, he really knows what he's talking about. And so, you know, people have like, sort of two systems, or this is his proposal, I'll, and I'll, I'll explain this quickly. So you have sort of like two systems of that, that dictate your action, like how you perceive the world, right, rather. Uh, you have a, a sort of an embedded system that's like very reactionary, right? Like system one that doesn't go through a lot of processing. Like, so you see a bear and then you get that feeling of like, oh shit, that's a bear, right? That initial sort of like, you know, goosebumps you get, like that fear, that's system one, right? You don't really condition it or, or like you can condition it, but that's sort of like that impulsive layer, uh, that sort of that fast initial thought, right? You have a secondary system like system two, which actually is like the logic that you put in behind, you know, how you process this information. So you see a bear and you go, oh, shit, that's a bear. But then you realize I'm at the zoo and the bear is behind the wall and I'm good. Right. And so you're able to kind of like subside any any sort of anxiety that you may have or you're out in Alaska hunting and you see a bear and you're like, oh, shit, I should get my gun. Right. Like system one, system two. The thing is, most people, when it comes to finance, they never get out of system one. So when you see the chart going down immediately, it's the end of the world. We're screwed. Nothing's ever going to work. You know, you have that self-preservation instinct kick on immediately. And all you want to do is, is end the pain. If you've been around long enough, you sort of begin to develop that second layer where you start to understand, is there a catalyst? Is there something actually happening, right? Or is this just like a normal sort of uh, wave in, in this market, right? And you're able to avoid trouble, right? You're not going to go charge the bear, right? You see a big red candle and you're like, oh, that's the perfect time to buy, which a lot of people did on July 31st when the SEC case against Richard was announced. I could show you so many accounts that bought the middle of that big ass red candle and then they sat there and hated themselves for a long ass time. Most of them sold out like not even halfway to the price we're at now. Like not even maybe like a third, <laughs> you know, they basically ran into a, a falling knife, couldn't sit there and wait very, you know, as, as long as, as was necessary and played themselves out of a position, you know. So what I'm trying to basically say is that your your best chance is to sort of surrender to that, like understanding that you have this impulsive layer that's meant to kind of protect you and keep you out of danger. But at the same time, oh, we just had a 3% market sell on Pulse. Let's see who's responsible for this. Uh, I don't like seeing that flash across my screen. Who did it? Who done it? Who done it? Yeah, what, what you're saying is as far as your instincts as a human being, it plays into your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. It's actually, you're hardwired that way. Uh, the only way you get over it is is knowledge. Yeah. You, you have to train your heuristics. You have to. You have to understand that you are human. You're going to have, like, it's just how your brain is wired. And it, it, you actually have to refine uh, your, your, your way of thinking. First of all, in order to be able to tolerate this, if you don't do this, this entire process will be so stressful to you that you will not want to do it after a certain amount of time. It's just not worth it because you're going to be sitting there not in a good mood pretty much ever, you know, because you're, you're constantly in this, in the, here's the difference. I think funding Jim and I talked about this one night is that if you're in, in markets, if you're using money to make money, right, the, 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 the corollary or the opposite of that is is using like um uh like for example if you have a business you you are using money to make more money but you have more layers in there that you can control 
You can control who you hire, where you do business, which products you sell, who you get them from, how you market them, all of the all of these factors. This is what goes into being like a good entrepreneur or a good business owner. Right. You have a lot of control over these uh, um, uh, variables that you know, Lazy, increase yeah. your chances of success. When it comes to crypto, you don't have that. You can't control when someone is going to hit the buy or sell button like somebody just did. I'm still trying to find who it was, like half distracted. But yeah, you don't have very much control over what's actually happening. The, you know, that comes with, you know, that comes with the territory. So, you know, if you have to sort of understand that the, the environment you're in is your uh, at $310,000. Let's see. That's, uh, yeah, somebody took a chunk. Um, but yeah, way, so way to go, Gary. Was that you? I don't think Gary would be it would be in here. Uh, so I know it's a joke. And but yeah, man, like this is the kind of stuff where you're like, did you need three hundred grand at this very moment? Like, cause you just <laughs> you just ate like a bunch of, uh, you know. Let me see how big this account actually is. No, that's it's not even a big account. That was all. That was his entire holding, at least in this wallet. Yeah, yeah. That, it, that may have been a hack. I mean, you don't know the action. You don't know the intention. You don't know the other wallets that they hold. It's the same thing that gets like, it's interesting that I get like over this past couple of months, especially for like two and a half years, people have known my, uh, my sacrifice wallet addresses, like people that sacrificed more than a million bucks that I talk to regularly. They knew my address because I told them. And uh, the things that get commented over the past month or so, as far as me specifically, are he sold, he's out, uh, you know, constantly I have tweets about like the things that I like about Pulse Chain, Pulse X, uh, hacks about Richard, things like that. And so it doesn't make any logical sense that someone that sold and exited their positions and doesn't like the chain and profited or any of these kinds of narratives uh, would continue talking about it. Like you don't talk about the television that you bought uh, you know, the good deal that you could get on another television because you already have that television, right? Uh, it, it's, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. But uh, I'm looking at, since uh, Trillion had said something about a big sale, I'm looking at uh, right now on deck screener, PLS X and the PLS pair. And I see that there was a big dive. Uh, maybe that's because of the $300,000 sale that he had just made a comment on. But I'm also seeing it getting gobbled up like super quick. I'm seeing a lot of people, whether it's bots or active people just jumping on to do it, um, a lot of buy up. So it could be potentially a hack. It could be potentially just an exit for whatever reason. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff behind what people think is happening, especially with doxed addresses. Like if it's out there and, and Silver the Antidote says, this is what's going on. This was the guy that Alex that bought on stream. And this is what happened. You know, he did a two X or three X and then he's out. Like maybe that has some use case, but when people are in this community for five, maybe six years, and then they're continuing to talk positively, especially about the DeFi nature of these products, you know, like you got to weigh what you're seeing on Twitter versus your own intellect. For, for sure. For sure. Just, just, so yeah. to, to, to wrap up here. So by the way, like, like this is the kind of stuff where like you really want to see the intelligence and, and by the way he took a shit on this price that's why he bought like uh uh three zero one two five um when was that january 29th so basically he bought late into the pump took out a bunch of it took out a big loan on liquid loans two days closed out his ball right and just basically, yeah, wrecked his position for absolutely like no gain. See, this is called greed, my friends. This is called greed, right? Because but you don't know what you don't know what his position is or what he's doing, right? And it's, you know, I would like to echo what Gary was kind of talking about was, you know, people watching wallets and people, you know, get upset at other people. You know, what's this game? what somebody else does and how they do it is really nobody's business, right? Getting upset for somebody for making a move and commenting on say, Hey, that guy shouldn't do this. Or like, you're not under that type of thinking. You're not really seeing my well, opinion. Ben, ben, hold on. Ben, hold on. That's not what I'm doing at all. That's not what I'm doing. No, I'm not I'm, saying you I'm just giving you the play. I, no, no guys, that that's a, that's a very weak way to approach this because someone I, making it, I'm uh, not saying you, Listen, when someone makes, um, you have to understand, is this a mistake or is this a trend? 
But how do you know what his personal, like he might have something come up in his life or he has different things that happening. The, it doesn't matter. You'll never. Mm -hmm. listen, listen. Okay. Here's the, here's I'll the listen. difference. Here's the difference. Was this person able to successfully extract value? That's the difference, right? That's what, that's what matters. So if this person buys very low, makes, you know, now has 400% more or, you know, whatever, 300% more money than he did and, and sells that, that's extracting value from the system, right? He took out way more than he put in. And we can see that. We can see where he bought. We could see how much he leveraged on liquid loans. We can see where he closed his vaults and obviously where he sold, right? And so what I'm trying to say, what I'm saying is that with this specific person is he tends to buy tops, right? He's not averaging in at lower prices where he's actually able to extract value. This candle that he put down is the same candle that he put up, right? It's a net, it's a net nothing for the system. So when you look at it, when you look at it this way, is it going to, is it going to force other people to flop out? Yeah, but there's also like there's also a strategy with doing this. So the strategy that 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 whales will deploy is that they will look for uh, um, vulnerable vaults on uh, you know on whatever it's Ave or any of these protocols, right? They'll look at how much money is is uh, uh, w could potentially be liquidated with them market selling a large amount, right? So th that's, you know, that's a particular, because obviously this person's using liquid loans. He's probably familiar with that, right? And so if you get upside down on the position, a potential strategy is to sell through someone else, make liquidate them and re-enter lower. Like that's a slightly more sophisticated uh, sort of play. So it's not that the person is like leaving the chain or mm -hmm. like doesn't believe in it. It's that this person is is using his selling power, right, to mm -hmm. uh, to create a scenario more favorable to him because he went upside down, being late on the pump, leveraging being late on the pump, being able to extract no value, right. So that's what I look at. Like, it, I, but how does that apply to the average person, and what can they learn from it? Like. It's one thing to have all this knowledge and like you have that, but how can the average person, you know, what do they need to do? How can they make more money, right? You're able to do that chain analysis and you're able to go in that depth, but I guarantee you 99% of people in Pulse Chain can't. Well, that, that's, what trying, that, that's what I'm trying to explain. Like, so here I'm going through my thought process, right? With like, all right, we see a big red candle. What does it mean? Right. Like, what does it actually mean? Like, let's go into like system two. Right. So system one said oh, some, someone like exited big. Right. System two says, do they have a reason to do that? So, for example, when when we made this top uh, was probably a couple of weeks ago now. Right. Yeah. A little. How long ago was that? Our top was. Uh, yeah. Two, just over two weeks ago. Right. So what you see there are people who have their pulse from SAC. Right. They've never actually bought. Right. And so now they start extracting value. We know, given their race, that they have their tokens sort of priced in out by the rest of the market. Uh, they are up. Right. So when they're selling, that indicates more strongly that there will be a cascade of sells. That means like the whales or whoever have sort of decided that this is the point. Right. Where we we take our tax. Right. They didn't have to sell at that point. They were at no risk of losing money. The difference with scenarios like this is this is self-preservation, right? This isn't really value extraction. This is just like, you know, hold, hold my, you know, hold my 300 grand for a couple of weeks. I want it back, right? Like this is what, this is that situation. And so it's less likely other than like a cascade of liquidations, which is honestly a lot of the times like the agenda when you, when you're flopping like hundreds of thousands of dollars in a single candle, like you want to make an impact, right? Uh, to benefit yourself later on by picking up liquidated uh, uh, liquidated vaults. So what you what you do with this sort of information, right, is you have to understand: uh, is this value extraction or is this self preservation? Because if this is self preservation, it's much more likely that that capital comes right back into the system as soon as a, a, a more favorable uh, opportunity presents itself. Uh, Recom's Recom, wallets don't buy unless he's doing it through other accounts and being sneaky and like doing all that kind of stuff. Right. 
So when I see a player like that begin to move, other big whales see that, right? And so they will also, that's what causes a cascade in, in selling, right? What so, I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, 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 I think we have a good panel, right? We always need to um, hear other, other people's thing. Like what you're saying is super important, right? And so I believe in the future, this Twitter space is good. We'll have the, a good mix of characters, people. And, and, and so, you know, we can learn on multitudes of levels, right? And I believe that you, you know, kind of leading that here and your depth of knowledge is really the, is a key part. And I think we could, uh, we can have dynamic conversations here, right? So kudos to you because your depth of knowledge, like nobody can argue with that. It, it, it's so good. The amount of knowledge you have in those things. And so that's good, tr Trillian. And, you know, back to, just, just let me just sum up what I was saying, right? You know, it doesn't matter what people do with their money, how they trade. That is how the game is played. Um, so I think focusing sometimes on, you know, people get upset with what whales are doing and how they're doing it. Like you don't know there's every, the universe has created such a unique situation for everybody and what they're going to do that it's almost a waste of time to get mad at someone or comment on it. Now me, I don't do research like you because that's not in my wheelhouse, but if it was, there's a plethora of knowledge that you can learn from that. Right. And so if you have those skills, having the knowledge that you're talking about is, is, the advantage that's all you need is like a three percent uh, advantage in this game to really make the difference but i would say for the average person out there like concentrate on yourself right concentrate on your psychology don't worry what anybody's doing with their money and this is all i want to say and i appreciate it trillion and um thank you so uh, just wanted to jump in for a sec like what what trillion and, and the guys are talking about here is exactly what they've been stating before like it's to do with your heuristics and how you train yourself now like some of the that stuff's outside of people's control like maybe there's an event in that person's life or whatever like it, there's a number of different things variables and stuff like that it's no different to the market but I think it's it's probably a good case in point for what we're discussing today. It actually just happened on chain, so we get to take a look at it together and and kind of uh, assess it. Like so, it's it's highly valuable to kind of look into that and see uh, the the trend or if there is a trend and that kind of thing. But yeah, I mean, like technically, this is what Tetra can do for people. The tools will be available, whereby things like this are actively monitored and uh, there'll be strategies around that. I know that doesn't necessarily make, it doesn't necessarily sit well with certain people, but it's probably going to change the way people do things. Um, they'll become more sophisticated, and those strategies will, will, will change over time. So, yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's going to be an interesting uh, place, yeah, Pulse Chain, over the next 12, 24 months and, and thereafter. Yeah, if anybody's I, I, looking at... Let me say real quick, if you're looking at Pulse, or, um, Pulse Chain or PulseX on Deck Screener, just in the past 15 minutes since that big sale of $321,000 worth, um, right after that, the next trade that I can see was a 40000 and then maybe like five or six minutes later was a different account with another $50,000 buy. You know, they're basically they're sitting there to snipe that opportunity. And then basically it's a lot of trended, you know, thousand to maybe like 2000 kind of on average of you know, different players. When I'm looking at the maker uh, tab and you can see if that person or that account is, you know, called a, a shark or a whale or shrimp or whatever it may be like it's, it's a, it, it's, it just gets gobbled up. So like what Trillian, in my opinion, what Trillian was saying is, uh, you know, if you're looking at the characteristics and you're saying this is an L1 and this is why I value this particular L1 and participating in it, whether it's your social brand, your participation in these Twitter spaces, your capital that you take out of your paycheck or your business, like you're participating, right? And so you're making a choice, I think, on characteristics. 
Maybe you're a short-term player. Maybe you're saying, I just need to double my money today and it doesn't matter what the game is. I'll just play the game at hand. Uh, maybe that's a choice by some. But the ones that are basically buying up a $300,000 sale, uh, you know, uh, action, a trigger like that, I think that they're here for the characteristics of the chain or they're here for the characteristics of the decks or of other products that are, you know, basically supported by this culture uh, that Richard has uh, propagated, you know, four or five years ago. That's kind of my view of it. Dude, a hundred percent. No, for sure. For sure. By, by the way, guys, like I, I don't get salty when I see people do any of this stuff. Like I'm not, I don't know. Uh, you should be past it. Like you really should. It, it, it does. I don't actually think of anybody as like an individual on the chart. Right. It's it, and, and it's not like a disrespect thing. It's just it, it makes it too difficult to like, you know, like what's this person have going on in their life and blah, blah, blah. Like at the end of the day, it, it's like what like how how do we deal with what is happening? Right. So like in, in this situation, right, we're going to have to kind of wait to see. Right. If if the, if that uh, buying pressure will will be sustained. Right. Of course, like we have plenty of buyers. There are a ridiculous amount. There's a ridiculous amount of capital that sits on the sidelines. Like it, it's really nothing. Right. It's really nothing like. But look, at, at the end of the day, that one of the most successful like tactics that like just just speaking for myself is watching uh, what large accounts are doing like. You have to sort of swim with the tide. Like that's what has worked incredibly well for me. Like it's better than TA. Like understanding kind of like support and resistance levels and all of that. You know, it's 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 it, it is important. It is. Uh, but at the end of the day, we have to remember that like there's like human action involved. It's like a living, breathing thing. You know. So if you kind of are able to understand the human aspect, not like an, in, on an individual basis, right? We, but you're sort of able to understand like um, uh, motivation, I guess, right? That will help you a lot. Like, it, it, in fact, if you're not really a big player, right? And you're not really able to move price as like, you know, as some of these other guys are, um, it is actually like, you know how like there's always that like little shark that like swims with the big shark or like, like, you know, there's always like those fish that swim with the big whale, right? Like, that's a good place to be. So anyway, I didn't want to like throw it off and say, you know, how I didn't want to be all judgy and stuff like that. I just saw it flash on my screen. That's so all I was like, all right, let's see what let's see what this actually was. Uh, but, you know, like, this is the kind of scenario, right? Like, how do you catch a dip like that? Like, let's just say this is just a dip and it goes right back up to where it was, right? Like, this was the opportunity that, that the sideline capital was was waiting on, right? They just wanted a slightly lower price. Uh, and then we go right back up. You know, like, we have that scenario. Like, that could potentially happen. You know, we, we are making a, a lower low, right? We're going to see where this uh, candle closes out and we'll see how, how people feel about it, Right. Because the thing to understand from this is uh, signal propagation, right? So now that the message has been sent, what will be the reaction? The reaction is never immediate. So whoever was able to pick up like large amounts uh, just now on a big sale, um, that there's no assurance that they're intending to hold a long-term position. But if you're trying to move like 50, 70, 100 grand into the ecosystem, one of the best times to do that is when you just had someone offload a big, uh, a big chunk. That's just like strategically one of the best times, uh, because if you could be first to that, you're almost assuring that there will be buyers after you who are seeing that opportunity as well. Right. And so to make even like 5% on, on, you know, 70 grand, I think there was an order. I think Gary, that's what you said, right? There was like a 74,000 and then like a 50,000 or something, you know, just even like a bounce on that, you get 5% on that money. Like your rent's paid, <laughs> you know, that's, that's like an hour's worth of work it might be like a couple hours worth of work, you know? So that I don't advise people to like really try to buy like wicks like this. It's super dangerous. Like you really if you're doing that, like you need to put up like your own statement, like, you know, whoever put in like 70, 50, 000, they know what they're doing. Right. And that's, you know, that's kind of like the, the name of the game, but look, you're never going to be able to take advantage of Wix like that unless you have something programmatic sitting on the chain, like point blank, simple. 
Yeah, it's just interesting. Uh, again, trying to figure out market psychology of you know players, uh, the ones that actually move the chart and make these uh, kinds of tweets. I see that uh, Somi just put out a tweet like 10 minutes ago talking about this particular one that you and I and everyone in the space has been talking about. Um, and then I see that the next buyer, basically after that dump, I made a comment about if you go to Deck Screener and you at least look the maker and you put in the the next one, the next significant buy after that big dump, uh, it ends with zero seven four. There's a maker there, and you know they participated really at the launch, uh, you know, basically of the chain eight months ago, nine months ago, and uh, you know they kind of played around up down up down, basically not really being profitable. And I don't know if it's automation. Maybe it was an automated kind of reaction. Maybe it was just someone you know paying attention at the happened to be online at the same time or similar time to buy the dip. But uh, you know they're they're moving you know a billion at a time. Whenever they buy or sell PLSX, they're usually doing a billion to two billion at a time. So they're you know they're significant enough to be throwing around fifty to seventy grand at a time. Um, yeah, it's just it's just interesting to see. Like if you look at PulseX itself, that's that's what moved the price of Pulse. I think. Um, maybe Trillion has different information, but at least what I'm looking at is PulseX and the reaction to PLS and all the other things. It, it got bought so quickly, like it's it's not fully recovered, but it's gotten bought so quickly that that gives me better sentiment um, than this one dump, this one one participant as a, as I look at the chain. Yeah, man, there's there's so much dry powder on the chain. You know, it's like when you start to make these tops, you know, people uh, like that gets a lot of attention. You know, this is so we were talking about like kind of like the signal. Right. And so clearly someone has, you know, something set up like a lot of times the way they'll set this up is is to trigger on a certain percentage move. So it's very uncommon. Like if you go back and you trace through the chart, it's just very uncommon to have candles like beyond like a, a certain, you know, percentage, right? And so, you know, potentially, yeah, like we could have, that could have been some type of automation, you know, set to trigger uh, like a, you know, kind of like, a, you know, like a trailing market buy for, you know, a certain level of discount. Uh, but this account has been buying, like they've been buying consistently. They bought the top, like, <laughs> you know, whatever. They also sold the top and immediately bought the top. So that was kind of confusing. Uh, but yeah, like there is a very strong commitment of capital uh, on this chain. Like that is for sure. You know, uh, there will be a flurry of, of like activity, like as people kind of like notice that this happened, like we just happen to be watching it. Uh, generally, like if you see something like this occur, um, unless you have like a million dollars, right. I would say like, wait, like an, uh, an hour or so. And I think that dump happened to be exactly at the start of the new day or one hour in. Oh, we're on. Yeah. So ex like one hour into the new day. I don't know if that actually gives us very much information, but yeah, like I think let's hold tight here. Like this might be a, actually a, a really good opportunity for some people. But uh, the way you play this is like let let the candle close. Right. Like let it actually close. Uh, if you see the one exception is this, is that uh, if you see a candle like this, it turns like deep red and then like, you know, gradually starts to turn green. Uh, that's probably a pretty good indicator that that's going to get eaten up, you know? So that's sort of the one exception. Uh, but yeah, I would wait maybe for like the four hour or something to close, like let the signal go out, let people like, get to their, to their battle stations, you know, and, uh, and, and, and see where we end up. A lot of times, like this market will sell down into like a Monday. I think we're what, on Saturday now. So yeah, we might see kind of like the, the little dregs kind of like, uh, you know, whittle this whittle this back down to like where that wick was uh but yeah like find it interesting i think like gary said like it's just it's interesting to kind of like study this from like uh like you know, so many topics like this is psychology it's human action it's finance it's like uh i don't know there's just so many things that go into it that's why i kind of i you know that, that's the perspective i kind of take on it uh but yeah man it's it's uh yeah it's just it's interesting